It's time for At The Hops, the program that brings crafty songwriters and craft brews together for one intoxicating experience. And now, fresh off the wagon is your host, songwriter and avid beer consumer, Mr. Chaz E. Get out of town! This is Chaz E. Welcome back to At The Hops, the podcast that brings together both music and beer for one intoxicating experience. There's our audience. They're thrilled to be here. They're thrilled to be here for the show that almost wasn't, but it is. It's That's Halloween. me. I, I almost wasn't. You almost wasn't. That's, you know, whose voice that is. That's my good friend, my brother from another mother, the man who put North Carolina on the mic. On the mic. <laughs> man who put North Carolina on the map, Mr. Mike Mitchell. Trick or treat. Trick or treat. It's good. that time of year. And it's so good to have you here, Mike. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's so it, good to be here. Too. We're going to have some pumpkin ale tonight, as a matter of right. fact. Speaking of... It's hard to beat a good pumpkin ale. It is hard to beat a good pumpkin ale. We're already drinking some Yazoo hop. Actually, I like pumpkin M's better than I like pumpkin ales. Uh, oh, I get it. That's a that's a joke. About oh. the alpha. We need a laugh track. Yeah, we do. Do we have one? I don't think so. I've How never heard it. There, that's there good we go. It's yeah, a hit. You should get a laugh track. That would be cool. Well, that would. Uh, but if we had, that would also imply that our audience is not actually here. If we were said so we were using tracks, that's true. And they you know, they're here. They're oh, beautiful. they're here. So having complete <laughs> silence makes everybody think we have an audience. I, I should have thought exactly. of that. Exactly. <laughs> we got a good show though today. Okay, uh, we always have a good show. Monday was National Beer Week. Yeah, you wrote me and told me that, yeah. and I didn't actually drink a beer Monday. You're kidding. No, but it was... You mean did you, you? there was actually a day goes by and you don't drink? Everyone's, but last night I what? had a smoked porter. I had to work late for my day job last night. And you I smoked figured, a porter? No, but it was smoked. <laughs> I smoked a porter. He was pissed. But I... I heard they're trying to legalize porters, and then you can smoke it all, all you want. All the time. Yeah, the porter czar is trying to... <laughs> well, that is... Grip go. There you go. I went to um, Craft Brew Nashville and I picked up a small. They, you can do a thirty-two ounce growler. Mm -hmm. I call it a single serving. And I had to work <laughs> late for the day job, and so I said, "I'm having some smoked porter," and I did. I actually, there's still some left. We can have it tonight. I can't believe that. So, so you went a whole day without drinking? I do often go a whole day. What's without your drinking. secret? What What is your secret? Uh, I guess I eat a lot those days. <laughs> No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Have I you ever gone a day without drinking? I don't think so. I've gone plenty of days without eating, but I don't think I've. <laughs> you know, I just. Always eat. I mean, you know, I don't sit around and drink eight or nine drinks, but you know, a couple a day. I think that's. I think that's good for the soul. I absolutely agree. I think you should have about two drinks a day, whether it be a beer, a cocktail, wine, whatever you want to have. Two drinks a day is fine. There you go. In fact, I think you know. My doctor knows I drink. Two a day, and he he said, "Okay, yeah, just he, keep it at two. I said, "Okay." So I I'm absolutely for it. I, I love it. I had a couple. Uh, I think I had two smoked porter last night. I don't know what who smoked porter it was. So you, uh, if you don't have two on a Monday, does that mean you can have four on Tuesday? I absolutely agree. You know, that's like <laughs> I remember. That's like the slim. Fast. You always agree. I do. You're such but an agreeable dude. I do. <laughs> You remember the Slim Fast Diet? Speaking of agreeable dudes? I don't know, but I was just thinking about it. The Slim Fast Diet. It was this diet. You bought this, like, uh, some receptacle full of powder. You mixed it into shakes, and they said, have two shakes a day and a reasonable meal, and in a week you'll lose the weight. Remember hmm. this? No, I don't remember that. I've been 20 years. Well, I, I used to be a heavier guy, and I you're, tried you're, it. You're pretty heavy. Thanks, man. I've and seen I, I've seen pictures of you. I've never seen you heavy. Yeah, before I became a runner, I was I was kind of pushing it a little so, bit. So, uh, oh, what are we talking? Over not over two hundred. Getting close. Now I'm always around one sixty, but I used to be closer to two hundred. Huh? But it was before I started running and eating a little better. Well, under two, you were about what six one. No, six. You're six. like six one, right? Yeah, about six one. You're taller than me, I think. Yeah, I'm taller than you, I yeah. think. Not that we're competing. No. But back in the day when I... I can stand I... on something and I'd be taller than you. <laughs> me too. Especially if you stood on me. <laughs> stand on me. 
So I was thinking when I was looking at the slim fast diet, what if I did the whole, it said, give us a week. We'll take off the weight. You have two shakes, a reasonable meal. I tried to cram it all into one day. I had seven shakes and seven reasonable meals. Did it work? No, it didn't work. <laughs> so That's one of those, it's not even that funny now. So zero beers on a, on a Monday means four beers on a Tuesday. I think that still works. Okay. And I think, um, I think you can have as many beers as you want. As long as that's good. As long as you don't have to um, drive. Yeah, as long as you're not a cab driver or a bus driver. Go to work or a, a uh, air traffic controller. Yeah. Speaking of air traffic, or even if you're going oh, to drive, you shouldn't. You yeah, know, you probably shouldn't do it. You kids stay in school. <laughs> Kramer, your kids stay in school. <laughs> <laughs> that on the coffee table for me? Yeah. <laughs> we got Derek Thomas is going to be on the show tonight. Great singer songwriter from all the way out in California. We are going to be talking to him remotely, featuring a couple of his songs, and in between, Mike and I are going to be tasting a couple of beers, aren't we? Okay, so we didn't drink anything yesterday, so we can have... Yeah, we can have... Four today? The beer in my hand right now doesn't even count. It's a Yazoo, though. <coughs> a hop... Pro, not hop project, but a hop something. But it was a growler that was full when I came in the door, and now it's empty. So. I went to uh, yeah, Nashville Hops... Um, wait... What's it called? Hops and Crafts? No, that's another place. There is Hops and Crafts, but it's called Nashville Brew Works, I think. I should know it. I go there a lot. Well, didn't the UPS man have a delivery? That too happened that if so I missed it. What does he do with the beer? Brings it. He has to wait till I can sign for it. He came today. I, I couldn't sign for it. I wasn't at the door. So he what asked were you doing? 90. I was working my day job. I was on oh, the phone. Okay. I worked from home, so I was on the phone being a diligent worker i wonder what i would do if i was a ups man craft brew nashville that's where i got the growlers from great place craft brew nashville i love it Deli Jip, delivering beer owner. what would i do if i was a ups man delivering beer and the guy wasn't home would i take it back to the ups headquarters or would i they're not sure what's in there or they usually I, oh, assume okay. that it's wine oh but it's beer i got gotcha. you but they assume it's wine they always say i hope you enjoy the wine mr holland and he's probably hinting he'd like to come in and have a glass. I guess. He or she. Oh. Have you ever had a hot pull? UPS driver deliver? Never, have you? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, UPS drivers uh, tend to be well men. Well, they yeah, I guess so, but they also tend to piss people off for the way they park. Didn't one piss? Didn't didn't your friend block? Yeah, in I had a, a friend. UPS yeah, driver. I sure did. David Who Wilson. Was? David Wilson. Today's his birthday. Also, oh, happy birthday! Yeah, man. happy birthday, Dave. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know why I played that first thing I found. Well, anyway, yeah, Dave is he uh, was he'd come home for lunch or something, and the uh, UPS truck was sitting in his parking place, so Dave just blocked him. <laughs> <laughs> Why he had like a numbered parking space? Or I guess, like that. yeah. Or that's just the one Dave wanted. That's hysterical. I love it. Why not block in the UPS guy? I don't right. think so. I, I think I, I think sometimes they uh, they feel above the law. I think you're right. And UPS. they would never make it in Dodge City. Oh no, no, not at all. Matt Dillon would have. Yeah, James Arnaz, right? Yeah, he would have put his foot down on the UPS driver. I saw something, you know, I just uh, had a confession to make, and now maybe... Oh, God. I can change that a little bit. I said I don't have a top six ready for tonight, but I saw an article today that you might like to use as a top six. We always have a music-related top six. We tried to. This one was, I saw a list today called the top 20. They had the top 20, but we could... Go down to the top six. Yeah, we could just shave off about, yeah. uh, what's 20 minus six? 14? Four, yeah, yeah 14. Okay, so we the, could shave off 14. The top 20 hottest bodies in Hollywood. Oh, my God. Should we use that as the top six? I haven't been to Hollywood lately, so I'm not sure I would be qualified. I think it was just in general, the top six hottest bodies. We could use that as tonight's top six. Okay. So we'll you got know. their names? You got their names? Yeah, I'll get their names. Okay. And we'll look we at that. We could do that. And yeah. we won't have to do any music then for that. We'll have Derek Thomas music speak for this top. And it'll be it'll be very timely because Derek is in California. And uh, we'll be talking about the hot chicks. 
Yeah, Derek Thomas. And yeah, I'm sure most I, of the girls live in, in California. Derek Thomas and Skyline Drive. Yeah. Derek may know some of them. I bet he does. I bet he does, too. You know what we'll do? Let's go to a little sponsor break and go to our first round of beer. We'll have, we'll just do, we'll do like two beers today. Two and, beers. And we'll do our two interviews we had with Derek. We had them earlier, actually. We talked to Derek on the phone. You know, that two beers, that was, wasn't that an Indian? He was, you know, he was kind of like an Indian chief. He was, yeah, he not, was, he not was, a curry Indian. No, American was, Indian. Yeah. He was, uh, he was in the outlaw Josie Wells. Is that right? Was yeah. there a two beers? Two beers, yeah. Oh. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, he became Josie Wells' brother in law. I remember. <laughs> Blood brother, rather, not brother in law. Blood brother. <laughs> Blood brother, two bears. Uh, two beers. Let's two go beers. to, uh, though, let's go to an ad from, uh, check out one of our supporters. What do they call them? Sponsors. Audible. Athletic supporters. Check out our athletic supporter, audible.com. We're coming back. And it is Halloween this week. So let's have a pumpkin beer, maybe. Or actually, we got two beers. One's a pumpkin, one's an Americana. Which should we have first? Uh, let's go with the Americana. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm sort of, I like Americana music. And so. Derek Thomas is very Americana. So he sure is. Let's do that. And uh, we'll be right back after this message from our sponsor. Hey there, Mr. Chazzy. This is your old friend Jack from over on the West Coast. Listen, I just wanted to call you and thank you. I went to your site at thehops.com, and from there I discovered a link to audible.com. That's right, audible.com, where they have over 100,000 audio downloads to choose from. I can listen to all my favorite books, and you know, that's good for me because I read about, well, about 1 million scripts a day, and after reading for so long, well, I'm just crazy. I don't have time to read for pleasure anymore. But with Audible.com, I can listen to my favorite titles. And for clicking through your link, Chaz, they gave me a 30-day free trial membership and one free audio download. Or maybe it's because I'm a celebrity. Who knows? Anyway, got myself a good book on beer. I could be a guest on your show soon. What do you say? I already got some musical talent here. Let me get you a little sample. All work and no play. Yeah, makes Jack a dome boy. All work and no play. Yeah, makes Jack Click on the link at www.atthehops.com for audible.com, where you'll find over 100,000 audiobooks and more. Sign up for the free 30-day trial membership, and you'll get a free audiobook for your listening pleasure as well. And we're ready to check out a little beer from Yazoo Brewery called the Americana Fest Ale. And Mike, this beer And the Yazoo was, Brewery is right here in Nashville. That's a good point. It is. And this was made for the Americana Music Fest. And it's supposed to be a smoky IPA, which I'm really interested in because I love a smoky... I actually love the beers that are brewed and... Um, uh, aged in the whiskey barrels. You don't like those as much as I do because you said you like. Well, it you like them separated. Yeah. But I like the smoky quality they sometimes get when they're um, aged in whiskey barrels, and I'm hoping that this. And I also love an IPA, and you pour me a very generous portion. Thank you. I appreciate that. So, so I'm hoping that this really satisfies both of my loves: the smokiness and the hoppiness. And we get to our tasting song, which is grooving. We're oh, grooving, buddy. I love the tasting song. Yeah. It will tell us the three steps that we should take every time we taste a beer. Mike, mm. do you take these three steps now every time you taste a beer? No matter where I am. No matter where you the are. The other night I was in a bar and I went through the three steps and everybody was going, what's that guy doing yeah. over there? But before, and, I, by the time I left, though, I had everybody in the bar doing the three steps. I love it. Everybody, give me three steps. I think that song by Skinner was. Give me three this steps. Show. Give me three steps. Give me three steps. Yeah, it was. Uh, Here's number one. Good. We're gonna look at this beer. Describe the color. Okay. And the clarity. What a beautiful pour, Mike. The head is just perfect. It's two fingers width. It's real sudsy. Real sudsy. I'm a good pourer. What do you say about that color? I'd say what, uh, kind of a goldish, dark gold. 
dark. Well, I'd say more, almost like a dark. I don't, don't want to say dark amber. We say that all the time. But a rustic, coppery, dark. I thought it was foggy, but it's just hard to see. I can't see. Th- I think you. you're foggy. I can't see through it. If I put it in front of your face. Ooh. Step number two coming up. What? We got a sniff. <laughs> yeah, let's have a smell. Kind of a sweet smell, would you say? Sweet, but subtly sweet, right? Subtly sweet. Subtly sweet grapefruit. Uh, that reminds me of somebody I used to know. Oh, what was her name? Her name was Subtly yeah, Sweet. You know your favorite Susan? Susan. Yeah, I like Susan. Subtly yeah, Sweet yeah, Susan. Yeah. It's a good name, Susan. Yeah. It can be Susie Q. There you go. Have you ever dated a Susan? Yes, I did, as a matter of fact. Oh, really? It was a beach romance. You know how beach romances go. Yeah, awful gritty. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where she is now, though. It, that was Maybe quite a few years ago. I bet she doesn't listen to At the Hops. <laughs> Bitch. I don't okay. think I listen to At the Hops. <laughs> <laughs> they told us that we could taste. <laughs> well, okay, is it I'm taste time? I enjoy the taste of the Susan story. Yeah, yeah. taste and time. Uh, the Susan story is a good one. <laughs> I lo- we could do the whole show on a Susan show. Uh, on a Susan about show. that beach romance. Yeah. Let's have a uh, toast. Hey, all one of them. Yeah. Wow. I like that. This. That's the kind of beer you sit around and drink at a bar or with some buddies. You know, yeah. this, this is real beer. Or with you. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> I thought that it sounded funnier in my head than yeah, when I got. I, I think said so. It. I would hope. No, so. I would proud be proud to drink this beer with you. This is exactly what I was hoping for. It's got that. It's got the IPA hoppiness to it, but it's got a smoky quality, just like they promised. Yeah, you well. could you could drink this at a football game. I also do. You think? I mean, it's called the Americana. No, beer. I don't think. <laughs> do you picture a smoky Americana bar room when you're drinking it? Or not. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's a real beer. You know, uh, all those things. Football games, bars, friends, women. All those things. Top six hottest bodies. In- they say... So we're we getting to the hey, top six women now? Not yet. Uh, oh. we gotta, we're we going to do music first. I'm kind of excited. <laughs> Here you go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> first you get hops, then comes the smoke is what they say. And that's... Really true. You really get that hoppiness first. It's considered an American IPA, but then you get a good smoky quality. I, I'm really loving this beer right now. Yeah, it's a it's a real beer. Yeah, it's got body. Yeah, well, like you said, uh, body. Maybe that should be the the theme for the night. Yeah, body. Body. We could talk yeah. about bodies. I like that. Um, you know, Derek Thomas. I'm sure where he is out in California. He's a surfer. That's right. We talked to him for a while on the phone. We had a couple of calls because at first we didn't get in touch with him, right? Remember that night? Yeah. We, were ta- we called him a few times and uh, it, we had our lines crossed, but we finally got in touch with him and um, had a pretty good conversation about, like you said, music, surfing, yeah, the, his travels. Yeah. He, he has a hard, of course, I think it came out in the interview that he has a hard time thinking about leaving California. Yeah. Because he doesn't want to leave that surfboard. By but he's now. supposed to come here to Nashville shortly, I hope. Yeah, and, and just temporarily. Join us in the studio, I hope, you know, just like some other guests. Like Jonathan T. out of New York joined us in the yeah. studio one time. Good and then guy. We, we did a round with him. We did. Not just beer. We did a music yeah. thing at Antique Archaeology. Right, for Doc Bennett. Yeah, Doc Bennett. I'm loving this beer, but I think let's go and listen to the um, first half of our interview. And um, if you want more information, www.skyline drive music is actually the place that you want to go to for Derek Thomas's music. But let's hear him talk a little bit and then let's get right to one of his songs. I think one of my favorite songs um, of all time. Of all times. Wow. From beyond the uh, behind the trestles, his album was Midnight Lady. Maybe we'll play that one first. What do you say? Uh, I think I want to hear your all-time favorite song. Let's hit it. 
is Chaz. We're going to start us. We're going to keep kick everything off. And my good buddy Mike Mitchell's here from At the Hops. Hey, Derek. Can you hear Mike? Hey. What's up, guys? It's it's great, man. The wonders of technology. We all hear each other all the way from Topanga, California, right? Did we get that? Yeah. Well, I'm currently in Laguna. I just moved over to Laguna, which is Laguna Beach, which is about. Um, an hour south of Topanga. You have a great, great background story about how you sort of got into the music that influences you today, and, and it's a big part of like Beyond the Trestles, the sounds that are a part of your latest CD. And you talked about uh, getting taken on a very long drive with some songs. Can you talk about that a little bit? I can't even remember it. I was so young. Um, <laughs> yeah. But it was just something that, you know, really... Um, resonated with me. But my mom had a boyfriend who was just loved listening to, uh, like, you know, Waylon Jennings and old, kind of like old cowboy songwriters and stuff. And um, and we took off. I think how long we were. It was like a month, and we drove all all around the states, wow. and fast, and visited some people and stuff. You know, this old Cadillac. And we just kind of, um, I don't know. I mean. I, I forget how old I was exactly, but but it uh, was uh, definitely something that shaped shaped something to me, you know. Yeah, it obviously made a very pronounced uh, impression upon you musically as well. But there, you know, because because all those influences that you mentioned when you talk about that, it, they come out in your playing today, which is you know very pure Americana sound, very. Um, when I was listening to your latest album, Beyond the Trestles, which you have up on your website, I mean, I just found it was, I want to say, very pure American music. There was not really, uh, there are no gimmicks to it at all. This was the real deal. And, and, oh. And, I, oh, that's right. And I, I think that's that's what you're going for, right? This is, a, I mean, a little bit raw, but also polished at the same time. And just a bit of every influence in the world from folk to country to rock to blues. Yeah, yeah, there's exactly. I mean, I at my last album I self produced, so I kind of self recorded, self mixed, self produced, and everything out of this little trailer in the canyon. So um, I wanted to do that one, like, you know, all myself and kind of be able to put something together that I knew that kind of I created from the ground up. I had some, you know, friends come in and play and all. But um, so this one was kind of the opposite. It was like, I want to dress up some of the tunes i want to have like a better production you know quality i don't want yeah. to try to record it all and do i mean it was such a to do you know i was recording and i literally recorded every instrument on that last one oh, no so problem. yeah so this one you know it's just nice to be able to track and track most of it live and um you know do some overdubs and whatnot but yeah i want i mean it's got a lot of different like like you said you know it's kind of it's got rocking elements and it's got like you know southern rock and then it's got old-time finger style storyteller stuff and it's got more like you know contemporary ryan adams you know ray la montaigne-ness to it the production is not modern but it's not like you know it's still warm and it's all like a lot of those analog and so it's still got a real real good feel to it but um yeah, I'm really, you know, I'm really happy with, with the way it came out and, and the, uh, I never, I mean, I thought, like, I've always been about songwriting, you know, and, like, I've never really had a goal to, like, be a performer or yeah. be a, like, or, like, be famous or anything like that. Like, I just knew when I was a kid, like, I wanted to write songs. I heard someone playing a song and then, you know, I started listening to tons of music and I just loved the songs and the lyrics like the inflection that a singer would sing with and all the different kinds of inflections that people would use and I would just get all tripped up on it and like rewind and play back like little inflections in people's vocals and be like oh this is so cool you know they're doing this and that and so I just like to yeah I love to write songs and that's you know the album's just all my influences kind of like you're saying so Derek this is Mike uh where would you describe your head? Where is it now? Is it still in your... I, I know your album came out in August. Is it still there? Or are you looking ahead to the next thing? Uh, when you're going out live now, what what do you like to play now? I know you're doing your own stuff. Yeah. But where, where's your head right now? Where are you going? 
I'm just like, oh my gosh. I, so, I mean, I think real quick, I want to just say uh, something kind of unique about what I'm, the, I mean, something like I think <laughs> it's kind of an odd thing, but I mean, like, I'm, I'm a, like, I love the ocean. I'm a surfer and like my whole energy and even my demeanor, if you can maybe catch over the phone at all, but I'm just, I'm like, I'm a surfer guy who loves, who loves the ocean. And I love music and I love surfing and I love them both with equal passion. And I, what I'm sure the reason I bring it up is my head is like in all this music and I'm always, and I'll tell you about that right now, but I'm just, I don't know. It's just weird. I, I have a hard time connecting and meeting like a lot of people who are, has, interested in, 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 you know, in the music and as like, I just don't think when you, when you meet me, I come off, I, I very much come off as like a surfer, laid back surfer guy, but I'm very much into so much different stuff uh, musically. And that's kind of like, I'm just live in the music and, but you wouldn't think so when you kind of like meet me, I'll really come off as like some kind of musician guy. I don't know. But, well, I don't know why I mentioned that, but I'll try to answer your question. Um, I've written actually the next three, I've got like over three albums written and I have one recorded that I'm going to get, get out here maybe in the next couple of months that I recorded with, um, uh, a producer friend of mine that, and it's like, it's really cool. It's, it's like Brian, JJ Kale, Tom Waits meets like Brian Eno and David Bowie. It's kind Good of, name. Great it's psychedelic, answer. yeah, yeah. It's psychedelic elements, and it's got some elements of electronic computer, but like warm kind of electronics and stuff. But with real rootsy, like slippery JJ Kale grooves, and like uh, and kind of dusty yet computery. So it's gonna be, it's really cool. Um, and uh, I haven't. You know, we haven't done anything with that yet, so I'm probably going to get that out. And then I actually wrote a album recently that was, I want to, I, you know, when I play out, my stuff is really, and stop me if I'm being too long-winded, no, but uh, when ahead. I play out. It's your, it's your okay. time, my friend. All right, cool. I mean, I don't know if you guys are re recording or, or what, but. We got it all on tape. It's all good. Oh, good. Good. Um, when I play out, I, I tend to. I have a lot of songs that are stories and, you know, I enjoy doing that thing where, you know, there's a certain kind of thing where everybody kind of needs to, you need, you need a listening room to, to perform, you know, cause the nuances are there and you kind of feed off that. But, you know, also I've been playing out quite a bit at like different bars and whatnot in Laguna and at other places. And just in general, you know, when you go to play music, a lot of times more often than not, it's like a rowdy semi energetic room. Yes. You know, people are out having a good time. They're not like going to a quiet listening room necessarily unless they are. Right. But you know what I'm saying? So I, I, well, I just started writing some stuff that was more, I wanted to have more, uh, I was thinking about the band, but I haven't put it together with the guys. But it's more uh, kind of like a... It's got a soul influence of like Al Green, Marvin Gaye, and like a... Um, Isaac Hayes, and like a, but yeah, like a Ray LaMontagne kind of thing. And so I've been writing that. I did, like I did another album I wrote that's got that feel, which I haven't recorded any of. But I've been living in that one. That kind of because I want to write some grooves that are kind of you know have some groove have some real groove behind them and then you know if I'm at that place where people are you know people are around and want to want to dance and want to groove that I can kind of put that energy out there. Uh, just did so much lyric. I, I kind of wanted to get a little bit away from lyric based stuff. Cause I'm so lyrical. I love lyrics and stories, and I'm still having a really hard time. I put, I got, you know, we got a lot of groove in this stuff, this new stuff I'm writing. And, um, and the lyrics are still, you know, important and whatnot, but they're not quite, I'm trying to write some stuff. It's more about the vibe and the feel, and it's got some cool groove than, uh, than about the lyrics. Um, and then I just got back from Nicaragua and wait, I wrote, wait, wait, I wrote a raid. Nicaragua? What were you doing there? Uh, I, I went, 
I went there uh, to go surf and play music at this little uh, resort hotel out there. Outstanding. And uh, yeah, so I kind of like played there and they gave me room and board, and I and I kind of went on a little surf journey, which I like to do try to do like once a year if I can. I kind of hit up a bunch of different places and you know send them my kind of bio and tell them what I've done and see if I can get in at some kind of uh, room and board and then get to go surf and kind of help my cost. So I did that for like a month and while I was over there I wrote this like rag I mean like I'm really not I like I said I just love writing tunes so I'll write all kinds of material but I mean I won't release it all under my name and whatnot but I wrote this like 10 song roots like reggae album which I haven't recorded at all I just have all demos Let's focus on, because we'd like to, if it's okay with you, play a couple of your songs on the podcast, if it's all right with you. I, I, I was hoping that you could maybe oh, yeah. pick a couple of your fi- of your favorite ones from Beyond the Trestles. And we could go back to to uh, the Topanga Ranch Motel, I'm sure, too. I don't think I have any copies of those, but but like... Um, yeah, I can send you guys some stuff. Oh, I know Honey Whiskey, you're really pushing, too, which is a great tune. Is that one you like, yeah. maybe we could talk about and feature a little bit? You may talk about the history of that one. Yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a couple songs on there. There's quite a few that I really like, you know, but um, I think I just pushed that one because it's the most successful one right off the top, and um, um, I don't know, you know, the production of it kind of came out well, and um, I guess that, you know, I have heard that one so much, it's not like my, but... um, I mean, it was always kind of like a Graham Parsons inspired yeah. kind of tune, and uh, I wanted to put a little bit more energy behind it, and I was going to do it real rootsy with a stand-up bass and an acoustic guitar and soulful, um, but then I kind of was like, oh, I can put my electric and, and step it up a notch and kind of put some energy into it. I really love the, like, the rhythm feel in there on the drums and the bass. It's got a lot of groove, like that second verse really comes in with a lot of groove, and... Um, so yeah, I mean, it was inspired by like it was like a Grand Parsons style feel, and it's his lyrics about you know um, this Cold Springs Tavern in Santa Barbara, which is over by the San Marcos Pass that you drive drive through over there, and so those lyrics are in there. And, um, actually, like I'm pretty much allergic to alcohol. My grandfather has like allergic to alcohol, and now. I have a lot of his traits and I'm like, I can have like one drink and I have to drink a ton of water or the next day I just feel horrible. So if we so get can, you live here, you can't do a beer tasting with us. You have to do a very slight one with us, right? I, a very small one. No, not beer or wine. Oh. No, but I can do liquor. Like, that's the point. Like, I can drink straight liquor, like high quality distilled liquor. And so I started drinking that honey whiskey and sharing it with my friends. And that's kind of where that song came from. Some beam 
stretch across my pickup bench. And I ain't got far to go. The sun will soon collide with the moon. And the stars will drink black champagne. And skyline drive will fold me in its lights. Cast a spell on Find me feeling fine. You'll probably find me out of my mind. Drinking that honey whiskey, my honey whiskey flying. Drinking that honey whiskey, honey whiskey and flying. We have a special guest with us tonight. Yes, we do. Yes, she's come in just for tonight's top six. She's really excited to. Very happy to be in. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our one of our favorite co-hosts, Miss. Wait, don't don't say it yet. As we, we're going to our next round too, that's why the beer is pouring. Damn it! We've always got beer pouring. We do. I can't get the uh, I can't get the sound effects to work. Suddenly. Oh, wait. Here we go. Are you ready? Miss Adia K. I, you, the well, it's still not coming. <laughs> wow, your audience really sucks tonight. Wait, <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll applaud, apparently. They're just well, they're all shot. Doing... Here they come. Here they come. Ooh, Here they come. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Welcome. Tonight we're going to have, and it's Halloween time. You really didn't have to get all these hotties in the room for me. That's oh, okay. they live here. They, yeah, they, they work here. They do. They're part of the uh, the ambiance. It's hard to get them all in here, but it's, once we get them in, you know, we enjoy their company. Oh yeah. Hello there. First line. First line. Oh yeah. And we're gonna pour our second round of beer tonight. We're gonna have two tonight. This one's just for Halloween. It's Ooh. a rogue pumpkin patch ale. Mike, look for that orange bottle in there you need to say it a little how bit more clever, spooky how clever to put a pumpkin ale in an orange bottle i know they They're were so Rogue original it's very creative like that really creative is, yeah it's all about the uh, container i'll take a picture of you there for our our viewers if we have any there you go <laughs> nice why are you guys posing here you, you pose, pose with the bottle oh that's okay i never take a picture of me I can take a picture of you. You just. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good picture. <laughs> you look as. <laughs> Here's another one of all you. Were the, you putting. No, I don't. I don't need Were you picture. eating something? <laughs> I, I, I'm always eating something. <laughs> there, <laughs> oh, no. It, it looks like there's something in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Okay. Let's, here we go. Our second beer, Rogue Pumpkin Patch Ale from Rogue Ales. Mike's going to open it up. I hope you guys enjoyed a little bit of Derek Thomas. We'll have more of him with our interview in just a moment. But first, we're going to check out this beer. And don't forget, skylinedrive.com is where you check out Derek's music. And um, let's see how this beer is pouring. Ooh, Ooh it looks a lot it's like orange. the last one. Uh, it is orangey. My, my phone keeps doing... What? If, weird things? Yeah. Your headphones, what are they doing? Uh, not the headphone, the microphone when I talk. Do you hear it? Oh, no, but I can... 
No, you, you sound fine to me. Okay. Everybody else sound okay. But um, ooh, it's orange. It is kind of orangey. It's it look, ooh, spooky beer. Very, I feel like I'm at a UT game. This it's just it almost looks like the last beer though. I mean, it's, but except for probably less sudsier head. You know, a nice little foam on the top, but it looks a lot like the last one. That dark orangey color. Can't see through Actually, it. Actually, it's kind of an amber. Amber. I think you're right, sweet, sweetie. Sorry, I called you sweetie on the air. Is that okay? Yeah. Pookie. <laughs> you're not allowed to. Speak. I'm going to edit that out. That's right, Miss Audia K. It does have amber is probably the better mm, color. Most... But... Oh, can we it go to smells this one? like pumpkin. I just yeah. smell it. So delicious. It's almost like candy oh. pumpkin. Yeah. I feel, I feel like I'm at a Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah. What a great seasonal beer. Thank Mike hit it on the nose. I think we should it, have. I hit it on the turkey. Ding, ding, ding. There you go. You hit it. It smells. You know, we're supposed to get also a little bit of cinnamon in here as well. Nutmeg. All that's in here. All in, of it. In wow. the taste? In the smell. Let's have a taste. What do you say? Here we go. Cheers, everybody. Nice talking to you. Ooh, no uh, chemicals, attitudes. Or I pres- like it anyway. A good taste. Pre- very nice taste. Very sm- it smells like it, it tastes like it smells. Very sweet. Not overly sweet, though. Did you? Media did, mouth feel. Could you taste the independent hops in there? Each one of them. No, that I could. It's not really hoppy. I would say it's more the sweetness. You get more of the uh, ginger and the cloves. Snap. And the nutmeg, especially the nutmeg and cinnamon and pumpkin is really good. I, sm- I smelled the cinnamon and the nutmeg in there. Yeah. It's really good. Good stuff. Does We've, it taste like a beer or like a more of a treat? Drink? Not like a beer. I would but have it's to got say. The, um, but it's got the. Uh, mouthfeel of a beer but you're right it's got the mouthfeel of a beer but the experience is more like a cocktail okay. but a cold cocktail or maybe maybe the uh, like the thanksgiving dinner you know the family's all sitting around the fireplace asking this yeah, is the beer you would questions. break out i like it you doing anything for thanksgiving mike uh, probably eat something yeah me too <laughs> I do that every day, though. I'm trying to get my cousin to come here. Yeah, Which, she could be on the show. Which yeah. one? On Which, the podcast. The, Erenda. The Portland cousin? Yes. Yeah. All right. Dude, I met her, right? Yeah. Okay. Glad we went down to Portland. So she's going to come up here, you think, for I hope so. Okay. She, she, she said she would. We'd love to have her on the podcast. She was kind of cute, as I remember. She's a, she she was, still is but, cute. No, she still is. She's still very cute. Is she going to bring her husband with her? No, hey. it'd be just her. All right. All right. This time. All right. <laughs> she might even be in our top six tonight. Hey, she yeah. might be. You know, should we get to that or should we? Yeah, let's get to it. All I'm right. Mike to... can't wait to get to it. No, what I is want... this top six? Well, I... For, well, first of all. That I got invited to. I think, to you might be, I think you might be in the top six. We have to have this. You can't forget the top ten for your favorite picks. The best things in life come in. Hey, you are number six. six. Top six. Top six. six. You got a problem with sex? Top six coming up on at the hump. It's a Smith and Wesson. And you've had your six. All right. Now, to most every top six we have is, is a musical thing. Tonight's going to be a little different. I think you'll hear really? music. Really? Yeah. Think you, I think you'll hear music when you see these top sixes. Yeah. Tonight, we're, we're going to discuss an article that I saw today. Oh, my voice cracked already. <laughs> I'm going back to puberty just thinking about it. And this was an article called... The article was the 40 hottest female celebrity bodies Now, of wait a minute. Why were, time. You, why were you reading this article I, today? Wait, <laughs> this is... So we're going to go through the top six. Yeah, we just, we just scratched out all... And just went right to the top six. Yeah, so the top six. And I gotta tell you, female bodies. I've gotta tell you, I saw, I saw the other thirty-four, thirty-four, and they've got some work to do to beat those thirty-four. But I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be open-minded here. And who? And they're over forty? No, this uh, of all time. This is the top six bodies, hottest bodies of all time. Female. Uh, yeah, female. 
Yeah. Are you ready for number? Now, number seven we're looking at right now. We're going to go to the six. It's Jennifer Aniston. She's pretty hot. Yeah. I could even date her. Can we go? Can we double date? Maybe you should no. call her. Uh, let's no. go to number six. We don't know who it is. Can we guess? Coming up. Yeah, guess. Um, uh, what's her name? Uh, Halle Berry. June Lockhart. Jane Mansfield. Hey, baby. Who the heck is Jane Mansfield? <laughs> okay, so she's, she's number a classic six. actress, like Marilyn Monroe time. She looks a little like Gwen Stefani. Actually, I like I Marilyn so. better than her, but I didn't get to vote. I. Oh, wait, the mouse is going everywhere, of course, because. Let me see what they. Uh... Your mouse is getting hard. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. What do they say about her? His mouse is stiff. It's not working. <laughs> That's what uh, she said. But she was before, around the Marilyn Monroe time, I think, too. I think the music gets too loud. There you go. Busty blonde bombshell. Um, she what, was what, killed in a car accident. Oh, my God. That's terrible. It is. At least, uh, did she find out she was in the top 40 before she died? Or? I don't know. I would have, I would have loved I, to be. I'm been, sure she was told. Yeah. I would have loved Many to Many times. <laughs> you know, I would have loved to have been the airbag in that car. <laughs> you know, Jane Mansfield was hot when there wasn't a top 40. Now, That's was, true. There they, was probably only a top even, four. <laughs> I think there were only 32 numbers at that time. <laughs> and there was a top four. Was she one of the women that you guys uh, found out? about yourself why you guys are boys or no i don't okay. know much about jane mansfield do you huh? no I, I i know i knew that she was hot in her day yeah but... the last name though says it all it's a man's field oh know? how clever do you, do you think that was a like real the, last name or i don't know or like yeah like the, it's like it sounds the, too the gridiron perfect. of girl mansfield right Let's go to number five. I think she looks like a typical American blonde, sexy woman. I think her la real last name was Obama. <laughs> Jane Obama. <laughs> Jane Obama. And she changed it. Let's go to number five. And it's coming up. And it, bear with us because we're, we're unveiling these in real time. Usually I... Oh, Selma Mahaya. Hayek. She, Hi, baby. she <laughs> is. She's very unique. Like yeah. This look, look woman at, can transform herself to like the, the ugliest woman to... Oh, the, and Frida? The, yeah, and the movie Frida, too. Like, I think she had to do that to stop people from stalking her or something. What do you think, Mike? I Selma didn't know Hayek. she was sexy, though. She's got a lot of curves. She does. Yes. In that picture, she does. Or she's trying hard, though. She looks a little like Kim Kardashian there. Yeah, but the hair is real, I think. Isn't Kim... It says uh, her new scene from in Desperado. You ever seen Desperado? Mm -mm. I guess yeah, I see. saw some of oh, that. Oh, did you like it? Not the whole. I didn't see enough. Apparently, I didn't like it because I switch. Ah. I switched the channel. <laughs> so she wasn't hot enough for you to finish the movie. I guess not. Oh, it says pass. It says pass the unibrow and Frida. It says pass yeah. that. She okay. did appear as kind of under. You want to go to number four? Are you ready? F what do you think about Selma Hayek though? No good, yeah. Mike. Mike's not impressed yet. Number four. Sophia Loren. I Bye. will I will vote for her. She's the most curvaceous woman. Actually, that's not even a good picture you got in there. Do you have some more that we can look at? <laughs> I mean, that woman is about 80 years old now, and she in still looks picture? sexy. Yeah, she was, was she the one in Grumpier Old Men in all those movies? There, um, th there is a movie. Oh yeah, Grumpy Old Man. I mean, I've seen many of her movies, her Italian movies, and there is actually a movie, and there is a scene that, unfortunately, it's really bad because they rape her daughter in that scene. But they leave her alone. But they are walking after that. They are both walking with her daughter on the street, <laughs> and you can't help but like she looks so sexy. That's the thing about movies. I mean, I, I hate to say it because it was like, I, I, I kind of hate to watch that movie just because of that scene. It's yeah. like terrible. But and then after that scene, like, they feel so defeated with the daughter. And and the story is like, they're during the war and they're trying to hide. And she does everything. And actually, the worst thing is she does everything to protect her daughter. And 
actually it's at the end of the war the, where they feel they're safe so they take the courage to go back to meet her husband and just as they're walking on the street some soldiers catch them and it, it's terrible i mean she protected right? yeah just the daughter but they're working like defeated who and plays the, her daughter she's really hot too it's a oh. beautiful girl too but but sophia loren looks so beautiful in that scene during the rape scene <laughs> no 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 when they're walking, they're walking down the street like all I've defeated seen, but know, she looks beautiful it is one of those things that you can watch a movie about a horror like powerful you know even i saw um the movie uh what is it called the, something of the christ passion of the christ yeah and somebody asked me what i thought about it and i kept saying well mary magdalene's hot you can see oh, a movie she is hot. what was her name uh uh, Bellucci, Monica, Monica Bellucci. Bellucci. You can see a movie about a disturbing subject matter, but the actress in it, it's like you can't, sometimes you can't, at least me as a guy, I can't stop but, thinking. But but at least Barry you, you see in that hot. movie why it was a temptation for Christ because they usually pick like a woman that is not even oh, yeah. good looking. And in that movie, I actually like that they picked her. She is like a a very classic yes, look. So Rosie O'Donnell as Mary Magdalene. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> in the Christ story. <laughs> yeah, good point. <laughs> you know, like. Oh, Sophia. She's she's pretty. Should we go number three? Yeah, let's go to number three. But these are like old, old. Well, I mean, of all time. All time. Oh. Scarlett Oh, I know this is a favorite of mine. <laughs> I'm in love with her. I, you know, I, as much as I love her, I, I'm still surprised that she was picked among all the others that were in there. I mean, but, you know, no argument here for me. She she just had a baby, so she doesn't look that sexy now. Oh, I think she looks great. I've never seen her that well, she Was she didn't not with great. Sean Penn for a while, right? Yeah. Yeah. The pen is my she, than the she's sword. Having, she had her kid with someone else. Oh, oh, that's she's still with Sean Penn though. No, we just decided no. kid. He's not kid friendly. <laughs> yeah. No, she's with someone else that just had a kid. Actually, I'm joking, Mike. She I, looks great. She was like, it was like a week after her, she gave birth, and she looked awesome. She was yeah, actually like in yoga pants and stuff. She's exercise. she's really hot. Child is very anxious to breastfeed. She, she is hot, but she is too intense for me. Like, I, like too. What's the word? Like, like if I was a guy and I was dating her, I I wouldn't even know what to do with her because she's, I would. <laughs> and I don't mean any disrespect. I, you know, really? No, yeah, respectful. He would do it respectfully, lady. Have you <laughs> Have you seen her in the movie Girl with the Pearl Earring? Yeah, I saw what's that. that? Uh, uh, don't you think like i almost like i don't know she was way too sexy in it is that know? sequel to girl with a dragon tattoo no nothing to do with it no nothing okay. to do with it and and i think in that movie i sh i think she was supposed to be a seducing because she was seducing the painter kind of i don't know i don't remember the well, you know, we've watched her grow up. She mm -hmm. was she was in uh, yeah, the she... movie The Horse Whisperer. I never saw that. Um uh, and she was a girl about 13 years old in that movie. So we, you know, we've watched her grow up and she was still growing up in the girl in the per Pearl. But now that, that's when she was kind of like, and that's what I'm saying. Like she was way too sexy for such a young yeah. age. So it was, yeah, it she's was a little... all grown up. But mm -hmm. she, yeah, she's, and she did a Woody Allen movie that I can never remember the name of the movie, but man, that's when I, that, yeah. that's was actually when I one? fell in love with her. Barcelona, some about Barcelona. Barcelona, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. well, no, it's got a couple other words in the title of the movie. Uh, Something Barcelona, but God, that's when I fell Barcelona, in love. Barcelona, here we come. That's when I <laughs> fell in love with her. I can't forgive her for butchering all the Tom Waits songs. Yeah, well, that's I, you no, know. No, I can't well, get I mean, over. That's, that's just her sideline. She, I don't think she's a. I don't oh. think she claims to be. Well, she may claim to be a singer, but she's she she is an actress. Song you, you so bad. She's an actress. You need to give her credit that she picked such a great singer like, that's to exactly, try to. Exactly right. She could have picked like some like what Jennifer. No, J she J could have is, is insisted on her next few films that his music was in the soundtrack instead of trying to re. No, she up. likes his music so much. Yeah, I think she was just paying tribute to, yeah. to one of her favorite writers. I think she was dating Sean Penn, who loves Bukowski, who loves Waits, I think. It was, was it her. around that time? Did yeah. She? 
I think so. I think it was an association thing. I think she's just into whatever her. I'm. I, I just know. think she's a very mature girl for her age. Well. Whatever. <laughs> okay. Mike, you, but you I'm deserve not a big Scarlett Johansson. You can Hansen. date her anytime. You have a, a blessing. Let's go to number. Two. I think she. I think she would have to agree to that. Mm-hmm. Number two. Coming up. Sophia oh. <laughs> Vergara. Hey, baby. <laughs> I think her personality makes her more beautiful than she actually is. Yeah, she. But no, she's got a smoking figure. She does. She does. And and uh, but you're right. Uh, just that character. She plays a modern family. So yeah. funny that you love her to death. I do. Mike. Um, I'm not real familiar with her. Where can I? S- where can I find she's her? She's definitely a Buddhalicious. Uh, yeah, she's got a lot of... Uh, she was on a Diet Coke commercial for a while, too. Pepsi. Pepsi, Pepsi. I'm oh, sorry. Pepsi. You? Oh, sorry. But uh, she's got she's she's got it, the body going on. She does. Okay. She got it that. on. She's got it going and on. And that's number that, two? That's number two. Yeah, she's got Buddy, the whole... Buddy, work it. Yeah, what is it? Buddy, work it. Oh, yeah. All right. Are you ready for number one? Ooh. The number one Chazzy. hottest hottest body, body of all time in Hollywood oh. is who did this list though? Is it one of your unreliable? Sources? Yeah, unreliable source. Halle Berry. Hey, buddy. I, that's the one I guessed. <laughs> you did? Yeah. I mean, come on. She had two kids, and she still looks smoking hot. I think I. I'm sorry. Think she's such an idiot. <laughs> Um, that I can't get into. Well, she her. must be doing something right to be the number one hottest. Yeah. She's really hot. She's hot, but I, I think after that story of her hitting people with her car and, and leaving them, I, I, I've kind of dropped her as a celebrity in general. Well, well you can still be hot and be a son yeah. of a... You can, <laughs> you can be hot and do a hit and run, but you know what I mean when something <laughs> sticks with you like that? I mean, the honest fact that she hit somebody with her car and just left them just... So how did people find out that it was Oh, her? they knew. When you get hit by Halle Berry, you know. I don't know. I oh. think it got discovered and she got let off being a celebrity. Oh. But well, she... maybe since they knew it was her, she just said, Hey, look, it's me. If you need, you know, just call my agent. Yeah. I'll, She's I'll... not the only. Halle, uh, Matthew Broderick killed people in a, in a car accident. Did you know that? Really? Yeah. Was really? it ever like proof? So did Ted Kennedy. Ted Kennedy, too. There's, well, you well, know, that, you're uh, right. Chappaquiddick. That was proof, though. Was the. Uh, Matthew Broderick, the, yeah. The, it Somewhere was in, in Great Britain. I think he was dating Helen Hunt at the time, and he killed oh, some people in a car terrible. accident. Halle Berry, too, oh. hit people in a car accident and decided she could just drive off because she was... Yeah, but we were talking how she is hot. See, that kills the hotness for me. To me, it's just, I know that she, at look any at moment... Body, look at her body right there. I know, but I know at any moment she might jump in her car and run me over. Did Chavaquiddick make you feel like Ted was not hot? Yes. <laughs> 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 Although I'm sure he would be happy to drink with me. I guess Halle Berry's hot, but I don't Look know. Look at those I, curves. I, you know what? I don't think so. I mean, for yeah. all these 40 women that, that we looked at before the, the yeah, top Yeah, we looked six, at the whole list. We and cheated. Ha- and Halle Berry, number one, I'm no, sorry. I don't I, go with I that. I don't either. I don't, I'm sorry. I mean, she, Who would you go with? You know, before we looked at any yeah. of them, I thought I really thought Marilyn Monroe would have been number one. Marilyn Monroe, yeah. She's really, classic. And she's she, number 20. And... and Halle Berry. Was she really hot or was she seductive? Well, it what's, it's, what's the difference? You know, The difference is like actually having the body. I mean, look at Halle, Halle Berry's body. And Marilyn Monroe was what, do just Do we need to Google easy. some more pictures for Halle Berry? Yeah. Marilyn Monroe was... Check, check the James Bond one. Oh, that was, that's an awful movie. Marilyn Monroe was the very first Playboy pinup. Did you know that? She was? Yeah. All right, we're looking for Halle Berry pictures. Sorry, I don't agree. No disrespect. She's got the body, though. No, You're right. She does. But No disrespect, but not number one. I still see in her face. I still see I can drive over you anytime with my car. <laughs> <laughs> the face looks like a bad I, drive. I, I love, I love that uh, Chaz Yee has such strong ethics. I need a lady that's a good designated driver. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna that's dri- true. I don't know. Number one. I'm a little disappointed that she's number one. But she has stood the test of time. So who true. would you put on number one? She's not stood oh. the test of time. She's 
been making movies for what? Mm. 15 years? That's a pretty good time. That's well, I know, but the other the other 39 women that... You're right. All right. <laughs> Adi has put the question to both of us. Who would we choose as the number one? Yes. Well, Ooh. I already said mine. Cool. So... If, I, I would say Marilyn, Marilyn Monroe. Monroe. Yeah. Marilyn Monroe. I have no idea. That's a tough question. Oh, Christina Hendricks is not on your list. Oh, Christina Hendricks is on my list. But she's just a lot. She's just... Did she get in the 40? She's just like... No, she didn't even make it in the yeah. 40. She's just like a playground. <laughs> she's like a, a circus. Oh, Tina wants to join them. <laughs> she's like a circus, a, a top-heavy circus. I don't know. Uh, but number one, I don't know. That's a tough question. I would not be surprised to see... Uh, I, I would have probably moved... Uh, I would have probably uh, put number seven. Jennifer Aniston up in the number... No, Six. no, no. Uh, she, I, I would put her at about thirty-eight. <laughs> no, I mean, she has a pretty. I, I think though Jennifer Aniston, her body is hot now. It wasn't as hot before. That's why it gets hotter every year. Yeah, I. She's she like works old, hard at it. She's like she a works, bottle of whiskey. How about Cameron aging. Diaz? Was she because she has a hot body too? She's in there. I think guys don't like her because she laughs like a man. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't she, Mike? I don't know. I, I never. I would put her ahead of Jennifer. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I think she has a. I think number two, Sophia Vergara. Was a Gen the, Jennifer is is too. But, Jennifer to me has kind of a wholesome look. Yeah. You know, she's the girl you'd bring home to meet your parents. True. And, that, and that's not the hot look that we're that I would thought we were talking about. Oh, you want a girl that your parents don't want to meet? There you go. Like um, Marilyn Monroe, Courtney Love. How about, how about <laughs> Christina Aguilera? She was on the list. Was I Iggy Azalea there? No. She has she a beautiful... She wasn't on the list. And how I, about Kid Uptown? I don't think she was on the whole 40 years. Are you kidding me? Kim Kardashian was there. But I don't know. Elizabeth Hurley was on the list. Oh. But you know, she, I know she's you know, a beautiful... Was Elizabeth Taylor Catherine, on there? Was Elizabeth Taylor no, on there? Catherine Zeta-Jones. You mean to tell me that 40 women and Elizabeth Taylor didn't even get the top you know, 40? Well, I'm going to tell you, you this. You know All right, fed hold Elizabeth on. Taylor got yeah, up there past a certain age? Yeah, well, I mean, you don't, but that's not the point. No, they I mean, couldn't sell that white diamond shit. <laughs> she was eating it. No, I mean, that's... I, we were talking about of all time. I'm going to tell you, though. Hold on. Of all the 40, I looked at all 40 closely. The hottest one was Julie Newmar. Uh, oh, come on. I don't know. What do you mean? No. Let's go back to Julie Newmar. I mean, I mean you're talking, if you're, you know, you're, you said that Elizabeth Taylor, you were looking at Elizabeth Taylor when she was in her late 60s. I mean, uh, Let's look at Jennifer when she's in her late sixties, and then we'll. we'll oh, we can't. About it. We can't grade anyway, right. let's move on. I, I'm tired of talking about these women. Wait. Come on, wait, 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 wait. No, we gotta give it up for. I'm, I'm making you look at. I'm making audio look at Julie Newmar. Of all forty, she was the hottest one. I thought. She's Catwoman. That's the real Catwoman. Forget Ooh, Halle yeah. Berry. Oh, they don't have a good picture. Anyways, let's move on. Yeah, let's move on. You're tired of the top six? No, we just can't agree. So well, let's, let's agree. move on. Claudia. Are you ready? Claudia is the top. We got to go to the outro, Mike. Yeah, oh yeah, I love the outro. That means we're moving on. Let's go on. You can't get the top ten for your favorite picks. The best things in life come in a pack of six. So baby, six, six. Hey, baby. You are number six. Let's go to another another section of our interview. I'm making them look at pictures of Julie Newmar, and they don't want to. But she looks good. Derek Thomas. Let's go to another song by him and a little bit more of our interview, and then we'll judge all three beers. Thank you for having me, guys. Thanks for coming on, EK. I think you mean two beers. Two beers. Thanks. Isn't that a, an Indian name? The great Indian legend. Two yes, be two beers. beers. You know, one of my songs that yeah. I loved on, yeah. on your album was Midnight Lady because it was kind of a longer, kind of, it was kind of slow, grooving, moody. 
but it was like album rock. It wasn't, you know, the typical three minute. You know, everybody shoots for the three minute, 30 second song these days. This brought me back to album rock. It's a little bit more extended instrumentally and everything. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's definitely something I want to kind of go into with the next album, too, is just kind of be able to flush things out longer and not have it be like verse chorus with a short 16 bar solo to. So that was cool that I got to do, you know, that we did it on that tune. That was that was always an idea I had behind. That song was always kind of going to be the electric guitar rock song. It was never, you know, that's how I pictured it. And, um, yeah, uh, I, I think I changed all the lyrics for that song like a week before the studio. I had been playing it for like a year, but then I changed all the lyrics. I was like one night, I was just like, ah, you know, I didn't, I wasn't super... I wasn't super, um, you know, happy with the lyrics, and so I kind of rewrote them all. And uh, to, because I felt like the song needed better lyrics, because the song was so cool, I really liked it. So I did that, and uh, yeah, um, I like that tune a lot, and I love that. Love that it just rocks, you know, and it has some has some uh, just space to jam out and song. Yeah, it. Derek, do you ever? Um pitch your songs to other artists to cover? Uh, you know, I, I definitely would. That's one of the things I'm really interested in. And um, But it's always been the field of kind of out of my scope. Like, I, 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 I scope it out how to get involved in that kind of stuff. But, um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I'm not involved in that. So I haven't really... I mean, I have a very small level every once in a while, but I mean, being a musician, trying to make money at music, make a living at it, being that's what I do with surfing and music is trying to make a living doing both. And the, uh, you know, song songwriting, song placement and stuff like that in film and television is where there's money to be made. But um, that's, and that's always been what my love is to do that writing and stuff, but to get involved and tied in with the right people and that, I find it really hard, and um, and I also find in L.A., yeah, I was almost moved to Austin before I moved to Laguna Beach, and Austin, I just I connected with so many people out there. When I played, I just, it, you know, the people that I saw play in the bands out there and everything, and in L.A., it's it's just kind of Americana music in a way is like almost like a, I won't say a gimmick, but like there's so many people kind of doing this thing, and I think it's something that, I mean, I think it's great because anybody can pick up a guitar and play a couple chords and put something together and have like right. a project. But I think, especially in LA, it's there's it's a lack of you know real talent and fo- what I mean is like follow through with like writing those kind of songs. I mean, there's a certain way to really do that and really you know flush out your material and work on it. And I just didn't. I just uh, I don't know. It's, it's kind of tough kind of tough doing the the music this kind of music in LA people don't really they either they don't get it or they don't like I don't know I just don't everybody's kind of lackluster so it's, it's just kind of like well I think I, I think that you hit on a, I mean a often point. in Nashville yeah I, I reach out to people in Nashville and I'm talking to them about m- music and sending my music over there and people are responding and they like you responding and they're getting yeah. it and they're saying things that make sense to me. And I know they're listening to the music and I know they, and like, you know, I could send to people in LA and I won't get any response back at all. And like even players, like if I reach out to tons of players in LA, I get like nothing back. Hardly then I go off in Nashville and I get tons of response back with people enjoying the music and lots of stuff. And, so it's definitely like, you know, I need to find that niche, but I also love the ocean. So it's a fine line between. <laughs> so you got to stay. I'm That's willing right. to. You can't be landlocked here in Nashville. Yeah. But, you know, you're so. a storyteller. And I mean, everybody in Nashville is, we love storytellers here. And that's, that's a crux. Right. That's the crux of, of Beyond the Trestles. I mean, it's a storytelling album. And even with everything you've done, like you have Skyline Drive is, you know, your website, www.skylinedrivemusic.com. Um, I, I feel like you're always talking about Topanga or Skyline. You're always keeping the story and your environment as part of your writing. You're not, you know, you're not writing for like, uh, you know, just to say, you know, 
I don't know, shake your booty or whatever. You're writing stories in your songs. And I think that's a very Nashville and probably an Austin type of thing. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, yeah, a pull from your, you got to pull from what you experience. And I tried to write, like, I tried working with, like, there's people that are producers that I've worked with who wanted me to be, like, a country pop country artist and wanted me to sing about, you know, barbecue sauce on my blue jeans and just this really like all this general. And I work with him for a couple of weeks, you know, and one specifically, and he's like a well-known guy, but he's just like killing me. And it's, it's not very nice either. And I was just like, eh, you know, this is not, it's not my thing. But, uh, yeah, I just, that's my outlet. You know, I need to be able to write about whatever I want and, you know, whenever it comes, I mean, like, you can't write to, you know, I write to, to challenge myself and to get a story out and to get a, see what happens, you know, and then maybe refine it and look at it theoretically and see about what I can do to like really spice it up a little bit, but to like just write for the intention, you know, of, of selling a song. I'm, I mean, that's another challenge in itself. And I think I'm open to that, but as far as I'm definitely open to that, because I love that like challenge to like write this type of song or that type of song, but to just write like mainstream general pop, like, and that's it. And like, just something that will, that's not enough of an incentive to write, you know, it's actually the opposite. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm going on a limb here and, and kind of think uh, and kind of sum up what I think you're saying, but uh, I think you write, the same reason you surf is because you're trying to, um, it's just to live your experience in another medium. I mean, here you are getting your stories across in the, mu in the music medium when you're surfing. It's an adventure on, on that medium right there. And it's, it's actually quite similar when you think about it. You know what I mean? You're, you're living your own self, but you're seeing yourself in a different frame. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're both, they're both things that you're in your element and you don't notice like time going by and you yeah. don't notice anything. You're just doing well, your, like your soul craft, you know, it's yeah. like that thing. And yeah, I just want to like, I feel fortunate that I have two things that, you know, and be from doing the music and in the surfing, you know, it's like kind of, you know, I feel really lucky and then I'm not super tapped into, you know, a regular kind of, reality so i find it hard to sometimes get myself grounded but it's all yeah. good and now from good to great here we have it from their latest album Derek thomas and skyline drive the album is called beyond the trestles this song is called midnight lady
child They used to call me look at kid But that was yesterday Now you find me slow and faded Just hanging with my midnight lady Yeah, dancing in the shadows again Till the walls come Stay between the lines of the shadows and songs that drift in the night. And save me with you by my side and go down feeling fine. Hey folks, are you a musician or a band looking to get the best quality recording of your music at the lowest rates in town? Then you should go to the recording studio of choice for so many great artists, including myself, Chaz E., and Mike Mitchell from At The Hops. That's Audion Recording Studios. As a special exclusive to Audion Recording Studio will offer all At The Hops listeners 10% off of their first session that'll make your next album or demo absolutely affordable. For more information, please call 615-667-1080 or go to www.audionrecording.com, A-U-D-I-O-N recording.com. And now we're going to rate Mother. Mother. <laughs> I can't... Folks, I cannot tell you about the most passionate conversation we've ever had uh, that spawned from that top six list. We did. It's had a major, major, major argument about what is hot and what is not. It was hysterical. Mike, right? Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. I, yeah. I, I just cried because I was laughing so hard. I wish we had it all on tape, but nobody would want to hear it about. And it had to do with... Um, you had a good point, though. I mean, you have to compare people from the time period that they were popular in, and it's hard to compare apples to apples that way. That's true. But I was just laughing because, Mike, I've never seen you get so passionate about a top six list. <laughs> this one was important to you. Yeah, it was. It was important. <laughs> it was very important that they get those right. And uh, what can we say? Derek Thomas, great musician. I enjoyed it. Maybe we should do a non-musical top six list every time. Or is that not a good idea? Well, I think we should have open minds. Just open minds to anything. The top six open minds of all time. That would be good. It's, am I on there? Oh, I, I'm an open mind. Yes, of course. All right. In the meantime, let's judge the two beers that we tried tonight while listening to Derek's music. And oh, the first one, the Americana Fest Ale from Yazoo Brewery. It was an IPA, but they called it a smoky IPA. It was brewed especially for the Americana Music Festival. 62 IBUs, hoppy, but not overly bitter. Mike Mitchell, did you think it was It's a Hit? Close enough for rock and roller. Don't quit your day job. That one was a hit. 
Oh, yes. Tell yeah. me more. Tell me more. Well, I liked it because it was a real beer. It, it is. I'm still drinking it. I went back and got more. It's... Yeah. To me, a real beer is a beer you can drink out with your friends. You can take it anywhere and have a good time in any situation. And I thought that beer met, met the challenge. This one pleases everybody, I think, that's into craft beers. It's got the hoppiness, which a lot of craft beer lovers like because IPAs are very popular. It's got a smoky quality that comes to you. It's, it's, got, it's just got it all. And it's got a really good mouthfeel, really thick, but not too thick. I mean, it really is a pleasing beer. It Americana is a great name for it. I think it blends everything great about American craft beers into one brew. Yeah, I, mean, I, I really like that beer. It's a hit from me, too. Okay. I'm, I'm give it an applause, too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Let's talk about the second beer we tried today, just in time for Halloween and for our top six women. Mm-hmm. Hottest woman. Pumpkin Patch Ale from Rogue Ales in Newport, Oregon. This beer was, as I said, from Rogue Ales, www.rogue.com. A pumpkin patch ale filled with flavors of everything from cinnamon to ginger cloves to vanilla bean to uh, nutmeg. Mike Mitchell, did you think it was It's a Hit? Close enough for rock and roll or don't quit your day job? I'm going to say close enough to rock and roll on that one. I've got sort of the same opinion. I'm going to double it. <laughs> why, why do you think so? Well, all of the ingredients that you were talking about, cinnamon, for example, I don't, I don't want cinnamon in my beer. I That's mean, a good point. Uh, I think we said during the show it would be good if the family was sitting around on Thanksgiving and after the big meal and talking about all the uh, things that families like to talk about. That might be the beer you'd want to do, but... I just don't want cinnamon in my beer. You make a good point, which is for a, a sweet drink, do you want your beer to be that that subject or do you want it to be a sweet drink, like a, a white Russian? I mean, that's a traditionally sweet drink. Because, I, you know, I, I get the same feeling sometimes. Like we had the one time at a beer fest, I think it was Southern, uh, Southern something, had a creme brulee beer remember at the national predators beer fest mike Mm -hmm. and and both you and i were like yeah it tastes kind of like it's sweet but i'm not sure i want my beer to be sweet and that maybe that's right i i totally agree with you i mean it's like yeah it's a good dessert product but i'm not sure i want that in my beer exactly that's where i am on that number two beer yeah but if i was to pick a dessert drink and i had to pick a beer I might pick it. But I think for a dessert drink, I would not pick a beer. How about you? If you're having a cocktails and they said, how about a dessert cocktail? Would you make it a beer or would you do something? I do often do that Sam Smith organic chocolate for dessert or a smoked porter. But yeah, but for a sweet after dinner drink, I don't often choose a beer. Yeah, I'm not sure I'd want a sweet after dinner drink. How about a vodka and a grapefruit? That's always good, right? (laughs) And it's healthy. There you go. It's healthy stuff. I didn't know that. I'll have, I'll have I mean, another. It sounds healthy. I mean, it's got grapefruit in it. That's Vitamin true. C. There you go. Vitamin C. So we had a very good show tonight. Um, once again, everybody, uh, go to, don't forget to check out our musical guest at SkylineDriveMusic.com. Check us out at Facebook.com slash at the hops or at www.atthehops.com. Mike, Mitchell, you can find it at ReverbNation.com slash Mike Mitchell Songs. I don't say that every week. That's true, you don't. But it's on our site every week. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. We, we yeah, it is. You're right. Yeah. And um, we're putting the full podcast on Facebook now, so come there and give us some feedback. And Greg Troyan's with us next week. Great. One of the first... Uh, sorry, Mike. I, I was did. just going to say... Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. And all you you kiddies, do not eat any candy that's been opened. Exactly. Or the package has been opened. Don't, yeah. Let your parents see all the candy that you gather during Halloween before you eat it. I like that advice. There you go. I'm going to do the same thing. Are you going trick-or-treating? Probably not, but... I'm thinking about going as... uh, Mike Mitchell, the At The Hops host. I'm thinking of going as, uh, 
one of the top six hottest ones. <laughs> <laughs> well, looking at that top six, you probably would compete very favorably. Oh, man, that was funny. <laughs> I can't explain it. But we had a whole long discussion after the, the podcast segment was finished recording it was fun i think we yeah to put it, was it all fun. in a nutshell i think we respectfully disagreed with the selection of the top six but i mean it's all personal and, it, and in the end i mean if you're going to ask me to choose the top six sexiest women it would not be about anything they said it, i i would like to me like we were talking about uh um, the one you like a lot, uh, Scarlett Johansson, mm-hmm. and I can't get over the fact that she butchered all those Tom Waits songs. See, things like that stick to me. I would pick somebody else as a top sexiest because I can't get over that. Or Halle Berry hitting people in the car. Yeah, you're a sensitive guy. I guess I am, yeah. but I'm sort of an asshole too. Well, yeah, time. sort of. <laughs> at the same time, that's the beauty of me. I can be an asshole and sensitive at the same time. There you time. go, sensitive asshole. It's funny though how we get hung up on stuff like that. You know, it really is. Yeah, it is. We do as a society. We get hung up on one piece that gets attached to people and their reputation. The reputation of at the hop so was pristine. We'll be back at you next week. We've been coming at you every week now for almost a year. Who's our next guest? Greg Troyan. All right, Greg. Greg. Uh, the only glam rock artist here in nashville tennessee yes there is more than country in nashville right mike and the first glam rock artist on our show absolutely can't wait to have him here and we got a special beer just picked out just for him all right anything else to say mike before we go happy halloween again happy halloween their second album yes i love it cheers everybody thanks for listening to at the hops Don't forget to leave us feedback and visit us regularly at www.atthehops.com. All songs performed on this program are the property of the artist. Use of these songs without the artist's consent is prohibited. See you next round. Because I like the taste of imported beer and I like the kind they brew right here. Because I'm very open-minded, that's the way I've been reared And I want to have a great, great day Your mouse is getting hard. Hey, baby.